This is a summary of Make Brilliant Work, a book by Rod Judkins. Do you dream of making something brilliant but wonder if you're capable? You are if you are willing to do what it takes. The advice, methods, and mindsets this book provides will spur you to shake up your way of doing things and make brilliant work. It just takes commitment. Find out how to get out of a rut, get noticed, gain a new perspective on discouraging experiences, and find confidence and drive. This book will appeal to and inspire anyone who wants to surpass their limits and achieve something exceptional. All right, here's the first takeaway. Stop trying to fit in. Being an excellent student doesn't make you a creative genius. People who do exceptional work often struggled in school. The educational system rewards you for mastering conventional thinking, but brilliant ideas are always unconventional. It's normal to want to feel accepted, but if you want to create brilliant work, you need to draw motivation from your work itself, not from a desire for approval. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs states that humans will focus on basic needs like food and shelter first, but will then feel driven to satisfy higher needs. The highest need is not approval, but self-actualization. Act based on what's important to you, not to others. Even if you win awards, it won't be as satisfying as knowing you've realized your vision. Fulfillment comes from satisfaction in your work, not from external validation. Not only will original work satisfy you more, it will also have a greater impact on your life. You will connect with more people by making things that fit your personality than by trying to fit in. Try these strategies to help you find your own way. First, identify your core beliefs and use them as your bedrock. They will give you the strength to challenge rules that don't make sense and strike out on your own and do things differently. Second, come up with your own answers before learning how things should be done. Learn by doing and come up with your own ideas first. In the 1920s, Eileen Gray wanted to become an architect, but was not accepted in a field dominated by men. She taught herself everything she needed to know to build her designs herself. Her work proved her outsider ideas were at the cutting edge of modern architecture and drew the admiration and jealousy of the great 20th century modernist architect Le Corbusier. The third strategy is embrace weirdness. At first, publishers disliked Dr. Seuss's stories for kids because they didn't have a clear, sensible message. Dr. Seuss's real message was to encourage children to free their minds and open up to new ideas. Fourth, dare to suck. Once a week, Steven Tyler of the rock band Aerosmith gets his bandmates to share ideas that they think are embarrassing to make sure they're not dismissing anything good. Look at what's unpopular and question why people disapprove of it. Are you judging something's worth based on conventional values? Fifth, bring your knowledge from one domain into another. Apply techniques that don't belong, like aircraft designer Malcolm Sayer, who designed a car for Jaguar as if it were a fighter jet. Breaking boundaries can turn something conventional into something groundbreaking. The sixth strategy is spark creativity with friction. Embrace clashing elements to create contrast and tension. Contrast highlights the properties of each opposing element, the way a blue swimming pool looks bluer with an orange inflatable floating on it. Tension creates suspense and interest. Like Charles Dickens' opening line in A Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Seventh, adapt your projects to your weaknesses. You may find that your weaknesses are, in fact, strengths. Andy Warhol had a poor sense of color, but the crass, sharply contrasting shades in his works made them unique and recognizable. And finally, don't aim for perfection. Be honest about your flaws. Your flaws can make your work all the more compelling. Okay, let's hear takeaway number two. Turn negative experiences into inspiration. It's easy to give in to feelings of defeat. In fact, research of psychiatrist Leon Sloman and psychologist Paul Gilbert suggests that humans evolved to give up. In the evolutionary past, most decisions were life and death, and an excess of caution meant you survived to reproduce. 
Nowadays, you can adopt a different, less cautious attitude. Use your negative experiences as creative inspiration. If something bad happens to you, look at it as a compelling story or a chance to come up with an innovative solution. You can see it as something useful rather than as a setback. Rejection stings, but you can channel the strong emotion it provokes into new creative work. Jeffrey Katzenberg was abruptly fired from his job as head of production at Disney after an argument with his boss. The experience fueled his drive to found a new studio, the very successful DreamWorks SKG, whose early feature, Shrek, poked fun at Disney characters. When you take a difficult path, you will experience criticism from people who are unhappy with their own decisions to play it safe. Embrace difficulty. It's a sign you're not settling for mediocrity. In order to keep working through difficulty, you must nurture your confidence. Even Picasso made missteps. At the height of his career, he painted an enormous mural commissioned by UNESCO. Critics immediately panned the work. His friend's diaries recorded that Picasso suffered a huge blow to his confidence, but he went back to work right away, starting with small-scale sketches and working his way back up to more substantial pieces. If your confidence takes a hit, don't retreat from work. Assess your failures, see what you can learn from them, and keep working. Here's another takeaway. Don't wait for approval. Assert yourself. Don't let your work go unnoticed. You can't passively rely on other people recognizing a brilliant idea. Salvador Dali was an introvert, but he created a larger-than-life persona for himself to promote his work. Put as much work and creativity into advertising yourself as you put into your project. The work you do to promote a project is an integral part of the project itself. If you publish a book, you're not done when you complete the final draft. You also need to talk about it on podcasts, make videos, regularly update your website, and do anything else you can to raise your profile. Don't let a no be an excuse to stop. Anticipate reasons people are likely to say no and be prepared to respond to them. Don't pester people. Understand why they are saying no and find a way to steer them toward a yes. Push back against resistance. When you ask someone for something and they say it can't be done, this often just means they think it's too much trouble. Designers Charles and Ray Eames saw huge potential in bent plywood as a material for furniture, but the manufacturers they approached all said it couldn't be done. They figured out how to do it themselves. The resulting designs were an enormous success. Once manufacturers saw the demand for it, they quickly found out how to produce their own bent plywood. You will never feel fully prepared. Accept opportunities even when they make you uneasy. Take a risk. When in doubt, say yes. It's normal to fear risks, but it's more harmful to always play it safe. If you take a risk, you will surprise yourself. You often do your best work under pressure. Psychologists have shown that acting as if you're where you want to be motivates you to get there. This isn't a question of trying to look like someone you're not. Determine what attitudes are holding you back and motivate yourself to overcome them. If you openly commit to something... It will motivate you to find a way to deliver. We've reached the fourth takeaway. Attempt the impossible. If something seems impossible, you're probably still thinking about it in a conventional way. In some situations, conventional thinking is a trap. If a problem seems unsolvable, that means it needs an unconventional solution. First, examine your assumptions and prejudices. Alec Isagonis created a car that was both smaller and more spacious by turning the engine sideways. Along the way, he pioneered front-wheel drive in order to make the design work. The result? The Mini is one of the highest-selling British car designs in history. Second, embrace unreasonable goals. Don't fear looking foolish. Researchers Timothy Judge and John Kammeyer Mueller of the University of Florida found that ambition has more of an effect on success than inherited characteristics, capacity, or socioeconomic class. Third, identify your avoidance behaviors. Identify goals that you are avoiding because they represent an unknown. Not only is it important to aim for those goals in order to realize your full potential, they will also motivate you better than mediocre goals. 
Fourth, use a compass, not a map. Today's ever-changing, unpredictable world doesn't care about your plans. Adversarial growth is the ability to adapt to obstacles and keep pursuing your goals. It's an essential component of success. Don't put off your goals until your plan is complete. Define your vision, then set out on the path to where you want to go. And fifth, skip ahead and imagine the future. If you are feeling overwhelmed by constant change, get ahead of it. Instead of putting all your energy into mastering current innovations that may soon be obsolete, imagine an ideal future. Do you want a future that's more ethical, inclusive, or sustainable? Think about how to make it real. Focus on creating things that don't yet exist. Okay, let's continue. Here's takeaway five. Find your obsession. People tend to stay within their limits and live in moderation. But if you find the right project, you can work on it obsessively. Successful people are compulsive because they are working on something they're passionate about. Only your passion is worth obsessive focus. If you commit to your passion, commit to it fully. Choose a priority and hyper-focus on it. The modern world is full of distraction. At any moment, there are hundreds of things competing for your attention. You must decide what is important. Learn to maintain your focus on one thing at a time. It takes discipline. Once you are able to direct your attention, you will recognize small ideas that can lead to major breakthroughs. Find what makes you enter a flow state. That's where you will do your most brilliant work. Edwin Land, the inventor of instant film, had assistants who had to pressure him to eat. He had no concept of what time it was or how long he'd been working. Maintaining this kind of focus means giving other things up. While Land was working, he didn't go on vacation or take breaks during the weekend. Be decisive and don't let other things pull you out of your flow. Stretch yourself to take on more than you think you can. Set deadlines and work through the night if it's necessary. You'll learn you are capable of more than you thought. Immerse yourself in the process and find ways to make things work better, even if it doesn't seem like the most efficient use of your time. Don't let other people's ideas of success influence you. Work to make things exactly how you want them. Delve deeply and develop a rage to master, a desire to know everything about your chosen field. Fight impatience and the desire for instant results by learning to appreciate the joy of exploration. Think about how far you can take your idea. Would it work on a larger scale? Directors like Ridley Scott and Guillermo del Toro directed 30-second television advertisements before they started making feature films. Obsession does not mean recklessness. Resist the pressure to move quickly. Take time to reflect and analyze your next move. Decide on the theme of your work early to guide your decisions. The strength of your project turns on the strength of your idea. A strong idea will drive you to keep working. Now for the sixth and final takeaway. Forge connections. Get support. When you are working tirelessly to create and to promote your work, it helps to have someone on your side. Salvador Dali's wife, Gala, was also his manager. Early in his career, she organized the Zodiac Club, 12 patrons who committed to taking turns buying one of Dolly's paintings each month so that he would have a steady income. Help people and let them help you. Gather a group of individuals who can succeed together. Renowned Cinema Verite director John Casavetes said a film director is like a host, and his or her cast and crew are guests. Look after your team as if they were your guests. Tend to their moods and their needs. Keep people connected and engaged and see what you can come up with as a group. Your first instinct may be to keep a good idea to yourself, hide your mistakes, and only show the finished product. However, transparency around your creative process can grow a community of people who engage with what you do and support you. Adopt an apprentice mindset. Put aside your preconceived ideas and listen to the people who work with you and for you. Good leaders don't aim for unquestioning obedience. They ask questions and gather information to make the best decisions. If you believe in what you're offering, you can see networking as a chance to help people rather than feeling pressure to pitch yourself. If you take genuine interest in other people, they will naturally open up to you. Go to networking events with the goal of better understanding what others need, then offer it. 
That was a summary of Make Brilliant Work, a book by Rod Judkins. Here's the six takeaways once more. Takeaway one, stop trying to fit in. Takeaway two, turn negative experiences into inspiration. Takeaway three, don't wait for approval. Assert yourself. Takeaway four, attempt the impossible. Takeaway five, find your obsession. And finally, takeaway six, forge connections.